So in this little article, we mentioned what? It turns out ice ages form in places as a result of massive snowfalls. And that one inch of rain translates into 10 inches of snow. And it goes on, and this is back, like I said, 99, they're talking about the highest levels of floods since the Ice Age of the Middle Ages. And it said, imagine if rains had fallen during the winter, uh, such as 40 inches of rain one week, and there were actually snow. It says 40 inches of rain would result in 33 feet of snow in one week. He also goes on to make the point that the conventional wisdom that the climate has to be a lot colder is also an error. Even at the depth of the last ice age, the tropics and subtropics were only 4 degrees cooler than they are now. Uh, much of the equatorial uh, rainforest belt remained much as they are today. According to Morris Ewing, um, it says here he's at the Doherty Earth Observatory. It's cold enough right now to cause an ice age. All we need is more moisture. And the record rains and flooding around the world demonstrate that increased evaporation from warm oceans is already providing that additional moisture. Then the article talks about volcanoes, but before we continue with that, I want to jump back to the Voice of Russia article. They say the world's oceans contain 60 times more carbon dioxide than the atmosphere. When the temperature of the planet rises, it begins to be quickly released. This leads to an increase in atmospheric CO2 concentration, not vice versa. It says a global warming that so many are talking about is not so much of a scientific problem, rather it is much more of a marketing trick. We do not, and it goes on saying that we have global cooling, but I remember uh, the great global warming swindle or something like that. It's a documentary about uh, about that, and it says that. Um, We've always seen the hockey stick uh, theory, or whatever, presented by Al Gore and them, anthropogenic, whatever, global warming. And they'll say that CO2 drives temperature. And what they say is that, these scientists, is that temperature drives CO2 levels. It's just a response or reaction. And the, uh, the Russians, uh, the Russian scientists say, we do not need to fear the cooling because it will take place gradually and won't be noticeable until the middle of the 21st century, or around 2050. So they're saying it will be slow. Um, in this other article, they're saying that um, that the last one happened very rapidly. It happened fast. I think one uh, one of the things that uh, we should look at is we're talking about um, the fossil records of these dinosaurs I was talking about were the food in their stomachs and no evidence of predators and other natural causes. Those that were too heavy to climb on top of the massive snowfalls were simply buried in place. Smaller species survived the trap because they could climb on top of the accumulating snow and escape. So, you know, if if we can, uh, we, we could probably, you know, we'll survive this. It's not going to be the end of the world. But at the same time, if you just sit here and you don't prepare at all, then a lot of people will die. So you're hearing a lot right now about how states or counties and your local municipalities are they've run they've already run out of their allocated funds. Well, will they learn from this? You know, that's the thing. We'll see, right? Uh, whether you're an anarchist and you think well they should even exist, or you are a statist and you think that these this government entity is here to protect you or look out for your interests. Well, let's see if they'll look out for your interests and take heed of what they experienced this winter in the way of uh, snow removal and all that stuff. It seems the only thing that they've really been able to latch on to is the opportunity to exploit people's fear and uh, impose um, all kinds of more laws and regulations uh, for people to stay off the highways, uh, checks, random checks, um, all kinds of stuff. Stay off the roads, and all the media tells people stay off the roads. Blah 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 blah. So, National Guard will be deployed. But um, it says we will have to make major changes in our infrastructure and economic systems. Rather than being drowned by rising sea levels, coastal cities will have to adapt to increasing isolation from the oceans as sea levels fall. Structure, and you see the opposite, right, from Al, Al Gore's fear-mongering, right? You see, ooh, the water creeping, you know, and drowning everybody. Structures in Atlanta will have to be 
uh, rebuild to cope with the kind of weather Chicago now experiences, while Chicago will have to adapt to Arctic weather. Grand Rapids will either have to figure out how to function under hundreds of feet of ice or be abandoned. Again, you know, are they going to be able to crawl out? I have this article. It's actually from March 2nd today from AccuWeather.com. Pretty good website, um, along with the, uh, the other website that I talked about uh, with HARP and stuff. And it's titled, Arkansas to West Virginia Face Greatest Ice Threat. It's not just substantial snow and severe thunderstorms accompanying the winter storm crossing the nation, but also treacherous icy mix in northern Ohio Valley states and mid-Atlantic Sunday. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a lot of different places. Tennessee and all that, um, Oklahoma, uh, Texas. So these people are going to have to adapt. Will they learn, too? Will they be able to adapt? And, you know, next year they can't say, oh, well, you know, we're the South. We don't have enough snow or ice or capabilities or infrastructure. No, they're going to have to start putting your money that they steal from you, that you say you voluntarily give them, uh, and start putting it to work, right? right? And technically, they've already had warning. I've covered this in the last three years. Places in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, Southern states, Texas, one of them, where they've had uh, uh, not just freeze uh, freezes, but uh, extreme cold temperatures along with snow, which doesn't mean if you get one, you get the other, but you know what I'm saying. Places that don't, don't normally have this wintry weather are getting, it's getting more of it. It's more prevalent. So they've already had two or three years to adapt, and they're not. Um, this other article that I have, too, is uh, Alaska sets new wind chill record. And this was from February 4th. This is actually from, let's see, February 20th. So um, in northern Alaska, Brooks Range recorded sustained winds of 71 miles per hour and gusts up to 78. The wind chill was calculated from the recorded temperatures of minus 40 degrees, yeah, minus 42 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm kind of finishing up this video or videos, depending on how long it is. I have no idea because I'm using a different type of editing software. Is this paragraph... As is too often the case when scientific research is driven by political agendas, the official line on global warming has much more to do with advancing the agendas of advocates than with preparing the populace for traumatic climate change. And as it happens so often when science bows to politics, I think they're more, it's not so much that they bow, it's that they're bought out, they're corrupted, um, they're coerced, they're threatened, <laughs> you know, you character assassinations. Uh, so there's many reasons why these scientists uh, aren't able to, you know, go out and talk about this more. I mean, if people had actually uh, spend money instead of spending a hundred dollars on stupid ass, overpriced cable to watch all of their brain, their you know these programs that brainwash them, uh, they can put it into uh, providing grants, you know, to these scientists so that they can go out and educate people. And then they can create, you know, these the, the political infrastructure to actually set up bodies that would do this. They would get all this stuff, get the wheels moving here, and fund this stuff. But uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to see that happen in my lifetime. The consequences of hobbling the Western industrialized world in the name of global warming may benefit a few, but it will create the worst possible results for most of us. Preparation will be the key to surviving the widespread population reductions that will be uh, that will likely accompany the coming ice age. No doubt, those prepared for global warming when the snow starts falling will provide future archaeologists with interesting subjects to go with the dinosaurs and mastodons that were trapped by previous ice ages. And this was based off a book, not by fire, but by ice, by, uh, written by Robert Felix, and this was posted on. Uh, CourtExplorers.com, and it was titled The Ice is Coming from 1999 by Courtney Patterson. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining me this Sunday, March 2nd, 2014. Take care.